welcome this morning. Please stand with us to worship God for He is worthy. begin this morning, would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, we are grateful that you gather us here together. That before we could come and ask that you are all already beginning to fill this place. That Lord, before we could ask it, that you are already beginning to move in our hearts and in our minds and in who we are. And so, Lord, this morning we we come together to give you worship, to give you glory, laud, and honor. We gather together for no other reason than because you are good, and it is right to praise you. It is right to come before you. But we are excited and glad that as we come together to worship you and to give you glory, that you shape and you mold us to send us out into the world. And so, Lord, this morning as we bring our praises and our offerings and our worship, would it be twofold? Would this time be a time of giving you all glory, praise, and honor? But would it also be a a time that you are shaping us to continue to do the good work in which you have begun in us and the good work which you are seeking for us to do into the world? Lord, we ask these things in the name of your Son, our Lord. Amen. Uh, Good morning uh, to those of you that are here and those that are watching online and those that are watching later on throughout the week. Um, As we begin this morning, there's a couple announcements um, and some changes to some of the announcements. Um, The first one is uh, we won't meet for our book study tomorrow. Um, instead, we will meet the following Monday, and we'll go from chapter 9 um, to chapter 15. Um, and so tomorrow, we, we won't meet. What was that? Did I make a mistake? No, I just said I hope it two chapters left. Yeah, so it'll be a good one. Oh. Um, I actually don't recall what the two chapters are, but... But yeah, uh, so next week, or, or, yeah, next week we will um, do a little bit more, which actually works out pretty convenient for me. I was planning on having breakfast with Andrew tomorrow. Now maybe I'll be able to have lunch with him too. Um, but yeah, so, so that works. Um, uh, for those of you that were here at Beach to Beacon yesterday, thank you for taking that on and for setting up and tearing down. And 
um, visiting with our community and, and cheering on the runners. I heard earlier, I think it was like some 30 people that were here. Um, and so thank you for making this a hospitable place, a place where people could gather and have fun. Um, I have multiple friends that ran in the race yesterday. And I'm just always amazed because I'm like, nope, I'd rather be the one at the church eating the donuts. <laughs> but good for them. Good for all the, all the runners. Um, I don't know if this really applies to most of us. Um, but if you are a young adult or if you know a young adult, um, a young adult that might want to be involved on the district, a young adult that wants to uh, have like a fellowship group, um, the, uh, the district this weekend is putting on a cookout up at Dr. Dillman's house. Um, it'll be from 12 to 4. So young adult, I think, I think they said it's from like 18 to 14 or basically graduated high school to whenever you stop considering yourself young. Um, so if you know anybody that might be interested in that, let them know. Um, at this point, it should be well marked on your calendars, but just in case it's not, uh, September 15th will be homecoming, and then September 16th, Dr. Dillman will be preaching um, his district sermon that he's been going around to and uh, preaching to all the churches. Um, he plans on doing this sermon at every church, and there's, I think, 48 churches on the district. He's been to a, a number of them before, so at this point, he should have his sermon down pretty good. Um, so I know I'm excited to, uh, to watch the video of it that day. So, um, And again, I made this announcement last week, but just for anybody that wasn't here or anybody that wasn't watching, um, in the upcoming weeks, I will be moving. And I just wanted to thank you all for the love and the compassion that you guys have shown me over this last week. Um, the messages and the, um, the phone calls and things like that. Um, they are much appreciated and I, I feel loved and I hope you all know that you all are loved as well. Um, and there, there's, there's a little bit more information about where I'm going and, and why I'm going and all that um, in the bulletin. Uh, but speaking of that, I think Mona wanted to make an announcement. Good morning. Um, the 26th is going to be sort of a bittersweet day for us, um, but we're going to have a luncheon for Pastor Brent after the service on Sunday so that we can have a more leisurely time to say, go say our goodbyes and hit him in the arm and um, just tell him how much we love him and, and send him on his way with having a luncheon here. We, it's gonna be a potluck. Um, the more cold things we have, I think will be the better. We really don't wanna heat up the oven and um, cook at home or whatever. So if you could bring something that's sandwiches, vegetables, whatever, um, it'll just give us a time to, to just really be able to talk with him a little bit before he leaves. And um, also, yesterday we had uh, quite a few pastries left over and juice and fruit. So after the service, please, please stop and have some downstairs. We've, we're gonna put them all out and uh, just have a little, a little snack after church. Um, and that will be it, thank you. So this doesn't have anything to do with the announcements, really. Um, but Mona had mentioned potlucks, and it, it made me think about this. Uh, I'm in a Facebook group, and there's a picture that was posted, and it was of somebody's uh, communion table. And I guess they had like a flower pot on it, but it looked like a crock pot. And so somebody was like, why is there a crock pot on the communion table? And this, maybe it wasn't an appropriate response, but it was the response I gave was, well, potlucks are kind of a sacrament to the Nazarene, so. So, we, we do love our potlucks. Uh, 
Would you join me in our call to worship? It's taken from the 51st Psalm, and it'll be on the screen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. King of all the earth, creator of the universe, holy triune God, from everlasting to everlasting, you are Lord. You have washed us thoroughly from our wickedness and cleansed us from our sin. We will we rejoice for your grace, O Lord, and those who fill before us. Again, we share the long we have seen them. And to you alone do we look for our salvation. Go right here. Who is like our God, the one who takes away the iniquity of his people, the one who gives them clean hearts and right spirits? Come before him with thanksgiving and offer him the sacrifice of praise. Let us continue in worship. Amen. Let's stand together and give God the worship, for he is worthy. Amen. Wow. Um. 
this morning. Living God, help us to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may follow in all in faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all the good through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our first reading this morning uh, comes from 2 Samuel chapter 11, 26 through 12, 13. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little little ewe lamb that he had bought. He raised it, and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the little lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for the lamb four times over, because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are that man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household I am going to bring calamity upon you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to the one who is close to you. But he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before, uh, before all of Israel. 
Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And then our second reading for today comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he led captives in his train, and he gave gifts to all. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we, reach all, or until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in, we will in all things grow up into Christ, who is the head. From him the whole body, joined and held together, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand together as we will sing our hymn this morning.
The gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to an eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do, what must we do to do the works God requires. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe, in, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Who comes to me will never, he who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of the Lord. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I was thinking about this earlier this week that um, as I was preparing for this sermon, I don't know if I've ever actually talked to you all about my call story. You know, that's language we use a lot in the church is the language of calling or the language of vocation, about being called to something and being, um, you know, led by the Lord to, to, to live a certain life or to, to do a certain thing. Uh, we often hear it with, you know, missionaries feeling called. I was talking with a friend yesterday who was asking me a few questions, um, and it, through the series of conversation, it came up that he said he felt called to Southeast Asia. Um, people are called to different things. And so I wanted to take a moment just to, to talk a little bit about how I was called, because um, I, I don't think I've ever done it. Uh, at least here at this church, and, and I think it's an important that we talk about the variety of callings and, and why God calls us. And so I was told early on, um, if you can do anything besides being a pastor, do it. I was told that by pretty much every pastor, um, to which my response was always, well, God did not bless me with any other skills than hanging out with people and talking about Jesus. So this is where I'm at. Um, you know, called into a pastoral ministry. But I remember when I was younger, I think it was my, uh, my, my senior year that I was really trying to discern and really praying through, okay, God, what, what, what do you want of me? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What is it that you're, you're asking? You know, because I, I think I'm starting to feel something. I think I'm starting... Um, to discern that you're leading me somewhere, but I, I'm, I'm going to need your help figuring this out. So I did one of what is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life, and I prayed, God, make it obvious. Which, I'll let you in on a secret. When I prayed that prayer, I did not really want God to make it obvious. I wanted God to make it obvious in a heavenly way. You know, in this godly way. That way I could say, sorry, God, I'm just me. I didn't pick up on that. But so I prayed, okay, God, make it, make it obvious. 
And so that was a Saturday night. That next Sunday, or the following day at church, we as a youth group were showing our new shirts that we were selling. And so I put one on, and the youth pastor, um, Andrew Porter, called me up on stage, and he's like, yeah, like, just like show off the shirt. And so I did, not really doing anything other than, you know, just spinning around showing the shirt. After church that day, uh, a lady angel, um, not a lady angel, it was a lady, comma, named Angel, <laughs> um, came up to me, and she goes, you know, Brentley? because for some reason nobody can just stick with my name. Um, at my home church, we've got Brentley, Brentnick, Brentholomew, just all sorts of stuff, never just Brent, which I don't understand how you can make a nickname longer than the actual name. But that's off, off topic. So she said to me, Brentley, she's like, I don't know if you realize this, but you really look like a pastor up there on the platform today. She walked away, I looked up, I said it was a fluke. Doesn't count. When I said make it obvious, I meant make it obvious in a oh, type way that I, couldn't, that I couldn't say, okay, okay, I get it. And so I said, it's a fluke. It doesn't count. And so I continued on about my day. We went to lunch with the lunch gang because there was a group of us that would always, always go out to eat after church and hang out and spend time together. And then afterwards I'd, I'd go to the youth group and so I, I got to youth group that night and we were doing something a little different instead of the normal service um, Andrew had set up prayer stations where he set up different stations all around the youth room that we could go through and pray and spend time in prayer and just kind of kind of take some time to to do a little bit more silence because I don't know if you guys know this, but in youth group and youth activities, there tends to be a lot of noise and a lot of activity and not a whole lot of time for silence. And so he, he made time for silence. And I remember I was at one of the stations, it was by the back door, and I think it was some pictures on the ground that we, that we could look at and, and see what they were saying to us. And I was looking at one, and one of, my, uh, one of my best friends at the time, Sam, she came up to me. Um, she put her hand on my back, and, um, and she started praying with me. And she was like, everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to figure some stuff out. And she said, oh, you mean about being a pastor? <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Have I ever talked to you about this? No. Well, then why would you assume it's about feeling called to be a pastor? Oh, it's just because it's obvious. <sighs> it's like, all right, God, quit using my words against me. And so I realized, okay, maybe, maybe God really is calling me to this. If, if God has been faithful to answer my questions like he has, if God has been faithful to send people to me, when I've said, okay, God, make it obvious, and God has made it obvious, I think of... Um, is it Gideon in the Old Testament where he threw out the fleece and said, God, make everything covered in dew except for the fleece? And everything was covered in dew but the fleece. All right, God, it was a fluke. Make only the fleece covered in dew. And only the fleece was. And so I, I, I think about it like that, just remembering, okay, God, you've answered every fleece that I've thrown out. Maybe this is what I'm called to. Well, then comes the question of, okay, well, where do I go to school for this? And so I'd looked at two different schools primarily. I looked at Eastern Nazarene College, which made sense. Um, but I also looked at JMU, James Madison University. And part of that was because I had a lot of friends that went there. Um, if I'm honest, they kind of had more of a party scene than ENC did. I know, shocking, right? Uh, and so there, there was a few different reasons why I thought about different things and I was trying to figure out okay God where do I go where do I go that will enable me to be faithful that will enable me to to live out this calling that you have given to me and I I think I knew that ENC was the right place to go that it would well equip me that it would make uh, mold me into who I needed to be it would give me the connections I need and it would set me on the right path 
but I really wanted to go to JMU just because, again, there's a lot of fun stuff there. And so I remember again, praying that ridiculous prayer, which I advise you to never pray unless you really want God to answer you, where I prayed that night, I, I want to say it was a Sunday night, all right, God, make it obvious where, where you want me to go. Make it obvious where I need to be. Less than 12 hours later, I got the rejection letter from JMU. And I talked to them, and they told me the reason why. You see, JMU at the time, and I don't know if they still do it, but they wanted a, a balance of students. So they would take the top of the top, the top of the middle, and the top of the bottom to give them kind of a range. And I was at the middle of the top. And so had my grades been slightly higher, I would have been a shoe in Had my grades been slightly lower, they probably would have accepted me. So I was like, well, that's not fair. All right, but God, I, I think you've made it a little obvious. Then just to make matters worse, like the very next day, my physics teacher said, oh, had you told me you were applying, my son's a professor down there. We easily could have got you in. Are you kidding me? It's like, okay, God, you've, you, you've made it obvious that this is what you're calling me to. This is where you're calling me to. This is, this is why you're calling me. And, of course, it's been the best decision I've ever made to follow Christ. As the song says, to trust and obey. All right, God, I asked you to make these things obvious, and you did. What other choice do I have than to say okay and to follow along? And so that's how I felt the calling to be where I am as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, as a teacher, um, as one who goes to youth camps and hang out with a bunch of dirty, stinking teenagers for a week. Uh, and because it was both senior high and junior high, the junior hires haven't all learned how to use deodorant yet. And the ones that do are like spraying on ax and it's like, I don't know which one's worse. But, I, but as I thought about that this week, and as I continue to think about it, I, I continue to realize that a calling isn't just for those being called to be a pastor, or those being called to be a missionary, or those being called to work specifically inside the church structure. We all have callings. I remember at summer camp one year, oh, what is his name? I actually think it's Sam again. There's a lot of Sams in this story. Um, Sam Askey, my friend from, from high school. Um, this is a Sam. I don't remember his last name, but he's married to a cat. Not the animal. Her name was Cat. Um, and so I remember talking to Sam one day at camp, and he was saying how he, how he feels called to ministry. Oh, what's that look like? Well, it doesn't look like ministry that everybody else thinks of it like. A couple months ago, he received his Ph.D., or is it M.D.? He received his doctorate, but he's a doctor that works with uh, hearing, and he's helped to create different sort of hearing aids. Um, audiologist, I, th I think is what it's called. Um, he's an audiologist helping people to be able to hear properly. To which he has said, I feel that that is my ministry, to help give the gift of hearing to those who cannot hear. I think of, I believe it's Martin Luther who said, the Christian shoemaker doesn't do his job in a Christian way by putting crosses on the shoes. The Christian shoemaker gives glory to God by making good shoes, by doing his job well. And so I, I think about that, how, how this call that we have, this calling to live a life worthy, or to live a life worthy of the calling you have received, being completely humble and gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. I think we all have that calling, and it kind of comes up in different ways. For me, it comes up as, as a pastor. For Sam, it came up as being an audiologist. For my other friend Sam, it came up as being, um, she's currently finishing nursing school. For some of my friends, their calling has been to open a coffee shop, a place where people could gather and enjoy the, 
what they call the gift of life of coffee. I'm not really into coffee, so I don't, I don't agree, but whatever. But a place where people could gather together. And there's all these different types of calls. You know, and I, I think Paul helps to remind us of that. I mentioned a couple weeks ago that this letter, the letter to the Ephesians, probably wasn't written only to the Ephesians. They probably added that line. Um, they probably added it after they had had it for a little while. To the saints in Ephesus was probably added later on. Because this was probably a circular letter that Paul sent to all of the churches that he oversaw. And so Paul obviously intended for all the Christians that he knew to understand that they had a calling, that they were called to a certain way of life, that they were called to something in specific. And I, I think for some of us that takes time to figure out what it looks like. It takes a while to know exactly what we're being called to and, and, and what we're supposed to do. But that Paul expects everybody to live into their calling. This calling of, of being Christ where they're at. Of being that representative of who Christ is. I'm going to throw Bridget on the spot here. She doesn't know that I'm doing this. But the last several weeks... I've seen Bridget more and more live into a calling that God has been giving her. A couple weeks ago, she asked me, how old do I have to be until I can be on the board? Several weeks ago, she said, hey, can I read the gospel lesson? Instead of me having to say, hey, can you read the gospel lesson? I don't know if she realizes this, but she's living into a call. Doing what God has been calling her to do because... Normal teenagers don't ask when they can be on the church board. <laughs> it, is, it is a calling. She went to a, a session at camp about how to start a youth group in the local church. You know, I'm going to throw Sam on the spot too. She's brought Sam to church. Like That's really cool. She brought Sam to camp. It was really cool to have you at camp this week, last week, two, however many weeks ago it was. <laughs> It was really cool, you know? And so it, it, it's living into a call, which, of course, adds on to all of your calls. Because now part of all of your calls is to support Bridget in the work that she's doing. I, Fred's not here, so this doesn't work as well. I hope he watches later. I told her last week that she is now Fred's boss. That as the one wanting to start a youth group, uh, Fred at different board meetings has talked about wanting to connect with the youth in the town, to connect with the youth in Maine, the youth in the area, which I think is a great idea, and I think we need to be doing that. And Bridget lately has been having that passion, so I told her, you're Fred's boss. You get to help Fred figure out how, how, how we're going to do all this. And so that's, that's part of your call now, is to help Bridget figure out what that looks like to minister to the youth here. And we're, 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 we're really excited about that. And so we, we all receive these calls. For some, again, it, it's more in the church. For some, it's more outside of the church of um, ministering to the sick, ministering to the homeless, ministering to those that are downcast, those that are downtrodden. There, there's all sorts of different callings that we receive, but, I, but they all come from one Lord. They all come from our one faith, from our, from our one baptism. And they're all, for as Paul says, to help keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Which is why our callings have to work together. Those things which we are supposed to do, they can't be at odds with one another. My calling is no better than your calling, and your calling is no better than mine, but rather, how do we use what we've been called to to continue to build the kingdom of God here in this area? Because if we truly believe that there is one faith, one baptism, one Lord, one God and Father of all, then all these things need to work together for God's glory And these calls can take us in in numerous different places. 
For me, I've often used this passage to talk about how I feel that part of my calling is to equip the saints for the good work, to help Christians be better Christians, to help us dig deeper. But there's some who are called to go out, to be evangelists, to, to bring people in so that I can help dig them deeper. There, there's all sorts of these different callings, and they're, they're all valid, and they're all good. And they, they, they look different ways. But I, but I know that we all have a calling because I know that there's still a lot of people that don't know the glory of Christ yet. And I, I, I don't know if you know this, but Christ longs for everyone to know who he is. In this passage, it talks about, what does this mean? He ascended. Except for that, it also means that he descended. One of the things that we believe in the church, we, we, we confess it whenever we confess the Apostles' Creed, is he descended into Hades. He descended into the place of the dead because he loves us so much that he was willing to go and burst open the gates of hell so that none may perish, but all may have life in Christ. And so I think about that as I think about our calling. There, there, there's a verse in Matthew where it talks about, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, I don't know if, if we all know this, but gates are defensive, not offensive. The gates can't attack, so we attack the gates, and they will not prevail. <laughs> There's a... Uh, I, I wish I could think of who said it, but it was a sermon I heard where the pastor preached about it as our job to beat the hell out of hell. What... What a better way to think about it is that we, as a, as a Christian people, are called to go out into the world, to go out into the darkest of places, and to say, darkness does not win. The light of Christ is overpowering this. Come into the light of Christ. See the glory of Christ that is surrounding you. And I think of why would, why would Christ descend? Why would Christ go as far as, as, as possible to redeem any and all? Well, it's because of the bond of peace, which is so important that, that we be at peace, that, that we become one with one another, that Christ goes to the darkest of places, and that Christ calls us to go to those very places as well. I have no idea how many people that, that my friend Sam, the audiologist, has gotten to come to church or has gotten to realize the glory of Christ. But through his good work of helping people hear, he's helping them hear the good news. He's able to spread the good news and be like, you can now hear. Let me tell you what you should hear. And so these callings are exciting because I can't think of anything more exciting than to remind death that death does not win. I can't think of anything more exciting than to say the goodness and glory of Christ, the goodness of God, the one who created the entire cosmos, wants us on his side, wants us to work alongside Christ. That, that this glory is not just for us to, to hold for ourselves, but rather it's a glory that God wants everybody to know. And it's, it's such a cool thing. But these callings, part of what I like about this as well, and what I like, you know, why I like talking about callings, is that, again, our callings don't all look the same. That we're called to unity in the spirit. We're, we're called to unity and peace. 
But we're not called to uniformity in the Spirit. We're not called to uniformity. That we can do things differently, and they are okay. That we can see things differently, and they are okay. That we don't have to be the exact same. There's a picture from college, if you guys will put it up. Um, I love this picture from college. It comes up every year. And my friend Spencer and I, whenever it comes up, we always reminisce about it. So Spencer and I look a little bit more alike nowadays. Now he wears the collar too, and I wear the collar. And we go out and we minister and we do all that stuff. But this was a picture that we took in college. I don't even remember who took it. But we always joked about how on the outside, it looks so different. You've got Spencer looking like he's coming from like a business meeting with his Bible in hand, looking how like what a pastor's supposed to look like or whatever. And then you've got me wearing khaki shorts and a, a shirt that's actually also kind of a hoodie with a, with a frisbee. Um, and when, when we posted this, we posted the caption where it was like, different methods and different ways, but the same goal, spreading the glory of God. Um, and so I often think about that when I think of callings, how Spencer and I on the outside can look as different as different could be. We actually had friends in college come up to us and say, like, I don't understand why you two are friends. Well, why wouldn't we be? We think very similarly. Yeah, but you two look completely different. Brent's kind of punk, and Spencer's kind of more well-to-do or whatever. Oh, well, yeah, but we both have the the same goal in mind is we want to let people know how good God is. Recently, um, my friend hasn't published this article yet, so I won't name it or whatever, but my friend helped me to realize just once again how good the glory of God is and how good God is and how deep his love for us is. He wrote an article and he was talking about outer space and how it is constantly expanding and how, how small we are in compared to the universe. And I mean, because the universe is ridiculously big. So big, in fact, that if you were to get in, into a rocket ship, and if you were to go at the speed of light, or even double the speed of light, because of how much the universe is growing, you would never reach the end of it. It would be impossible to ever reach the end. And he talked about that as like the glory and goodness of God. No matter how far into it we get, we can never touch bottom of the goodness of God. We can never outgo how good God is. And so I think all of this is important as we, as we continue to grow in Christ. As we continue to mature in Christ that we live out what we're being called to. That we live out our calling of showing people this goodness of Christ. This deep, deep love of Christ. I think part of our calling, excuse me, I think part of it we figured out a couple weeks ago. When, as a church, we gathered together and, and we, we talked about what areas we're being called to minister in how we talked about part of our calling is, is to create a place for the youth to hang out and to be ministered to, to create a, a youth group of some sort. And Bridget's been on the ball running with that, and it's been awesome. We also talked about having community dinners, and I think that's part of our calling is inviting people in to be fed because I, I've, I've preached about this enough time, but relationships are built around the table. I think that's why one of our core sacraments is coming around the table. Because we are shaped by eating with one another. Our community will be shaped by eating with us. And we also talked about um, providing care in the assisted living homes about ministering to those that can't always get out. And as somebody that has now worked at the assisted living home for, for about a year or so, I can attest of how much they need it. 
it breaks my heart to see how many of them, their families, more or less forget about them. They're kind of dropped off. I'll see you when we see you. And so I, I think it's important that as, as the church continues on, we take a look at those areas that we have said that we feel that we are being called to. That we go in the glory of God to spread the glory of God. That all might see the glory of God. Because ultimately, I think, although our callings can look different ways and can, and can be used in different ways, I think ultimately that lies at the bottom of all of them. That our ultimate calling is to give glory to God. To love God and to love neighbors. To grow closer to God and to grow closer to neighbor. So that ultimately all might come to know the goodness of our God. Would you pray with me this morning? Almighty God, you are a a good and a faithful God. We are thankful for the, for the many callings that you have given us and the, the, the many different ways that you have called us, that you have called some to preach, that you have called some to serve food, that you have called some to minister with the elderly or the sick. You have called some to build. You have called some to care for your creation. God, we thank you for the multitude of callings that you have given us. But Lord, we also thank you that although these callings are not uniform, they are united. That ultimately you call us all to be agents of your peace. That you call us all to bring about your glory. That you call each of us to to do our part to let the world know how good you are to remind our friends and our families and our neighbors and even strangers that they are loved. And not only are they loved, but they are loved by the infinite God of the universe. That as the universe is expanding further and further and more than we could ever imagine getting to the end of, we are called to tell them of your love that is like that a love that they can never reach the end of, a love that they can never get to the bottom of, a love that is constantly showing us how, or a love that is constantly being deeper and deeper and deeper. So Lord, this morning we give you our lives. You have called us. Help us to accept these callings. Help us to do what you have called us to do. Whether we have been doing that for 50 some odd years or whether we've just learned of our call this week, even if we don't yet know our calling, would you help us to be faithful? Would you help us to constantly remember that you love us. That we are called so that all may know you. Lord, we give you all of these things this day. And so, Lord, this morning, as your people, we come before you, knowing that we've not always lived into you our callings that you have called us to in the best of ways. There have been times where we have tried to run from it. There have been times that we have tried to avoid it. There have been times where we have just said, I really don't want to do that today. So Lord, this morning we we, we come before you in confession And we come before you receiving your grace. And we come before you to to partake at your table where we are made family, both with one another and with you. 
And so Jesus, our Savior, said this. The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and against neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. And now would you hear this, the good news. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. This is the good news that we are forgiven. We are forgiven indeed. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you this morning. Would our ushers uh, receive our tithes and our offerings this morning? up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the one God and father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. You have called each of us to a life that is worthy of you united in the spirit and the bond of peace. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in this unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life come down from heaven, bread which never perishes, but endures forever and gives life to the world. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. 
he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You deliver us from slavery of sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Christ took the bread. He gave thanks over it. He blessed it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he told them, Take this and eat, for this is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, that night he took the cup. He gave thanks over it. He blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he told them, Take this and drink, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant which has been poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. For we are called to be saints and to bring the world to Christ. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now would you pray with me that which Christ our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we come this morning to receive the grace of God, that we may be strengthened to go back into the world. We take of one loaf and one cup because we remember there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And that although we all have many different callings, we ultimately all have one calling. And that is to give glory and praise and honor to God through means of coming together and worshiping, but also through means of going and serving. And so this table is open for any and all who want to be strengthened to go to love God and to love neighbor. So as you are ready, come and be strengthened. The table is ready.
Would you pray with me? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. May we live with all humility (coughs) and gentleness and patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand together for our hymn of sending. receive this benediction as you go this morning. Go out from here and live lives worthy of the one calling which we all share in humility, gentleness, and patience. Speak only what is true and loving and so grow in the unity in ours in Christ. And may God the creator reshape your hearts. May Christ Jesus the bread of life sustain you always and may the Holy Spirit unite you in the bond of peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in grace and peace to love and serve the Lord and neighbor. You are dismissed.